This has very beautifully found manifestation in the planetary system in which we live. The diameter of the earth, the diameter of the sun, the distance between moon and earth. And in terms of how the earth's orbit is divided, based on this, knowing the connection between the celestial system and the human system, many things were evolved and developed. So a journalist was interviewing me and he asked me, Sadhguru, in India so many people in the ancient past have worked for human consciousness. Who do you think has contributed significantly in the Western Hemisphere? Without hesitation, I said, Charles Darwin. So he said, how is Charles Darwin? He's a biologist. No, no, in the Western Hemisphere, he is the one who put this idea if a life strives, it can go beyond its limitations. These limitations are not God-given. These limitations are not absolute. If one is willing to strive, he can go beyond these limitations. Even, you know, a pig can become an elephant, a goat can become a giraffe. Not a small change, isn't it? I, I will not talk about the monkeys, okay? So this possibility, that if a human being strives, he can go beyond his limitations. Then, this is close to fifteen thousand years ago, they asked this question, does it mean to say we can change our physicality, that we can evolve? So Adi Yogi said, your physical evolution is complete and he gave mathematical references as to why it is so. So when they asked, can our bodies evolve, he referred to their bodies and he said, there are 114 junction points of energy in the system, which in yogic systems we are referring to as chakras. There are 114 chakras. Out of this, two are outside the body. 112 in the body. Out of this 112, there are four about which you can do nothing. They will blossom if everything else is activated. There are 108 that you can work with. So because of this, you will see traditionally, if you wear beads, it's 108. If you chant a mantra, it's 108. If you go around an energy space, 108, this is because there are 108 things that one needs to do if he wants to have a complete mastery over the human mechanism itself. This has very beautifully found manifestation in the planetary system in which we live. 108 times the diameter of the earth is the diameter of the sun. The diameter of the sun 108 times is the distance between the sun and the earth. Diameter of the moon into 108 times is the distance between moon and earth. And in terms of how the earth's orbit is divided, even that amounts to 108, for example, the positions that the earth takes around the sun is called one nakshatra. There are twenty-seven nakshatras. Nakshatra is not a star, it is a measuring unit here. There are twenty-seven nakshatras and these twenty-seven also indicate one half of the lunar cycle. The twenty-seven nakshatras means thirteen and a half lunar months and that's how the lunar calendar functions. An akshatra is divided into four padas, that means one-eighth of the moon's cycle, which is approximately 3.5 days. 
27 nakshatras into 4 padas is 108 padas in one year. So with the completion of one year, there are 108 padas. So this is almost like the beads that you wear, 108. Right now, the planet Earth is arranging itself in the form of 108 beads around the sun and accordingly you use 108 beads whenever you wear. This is almost like beads around the sun's circumference. Based on this, knowing the connection between the celestial system and the human system, many things were evolved and developed. It's very uncanny that now in the last six years, the neuroscientists in the world are saying the same things. This has been a search, can we evolve human brain beyond its present limitations? So, neuroscientists today are saying that you cannot evolve the human brain any further, not because of neurological principles, but because of physical loss on the planet. The only way you can evolve this is, increase the size of the neurons, that is one way, or increase the number of neurons, that's another way. If you increase the number of neurons in your brain, the clarity will go away. A lot of children are born like this. They're brilliant but they can't figure anything because there's no clarity. As they grow up, some amount of brain killing will happen naturally and then they become stable. If they don't, they'll always be scattered. Another way is to increase the size of the neuron. If you increase the size of the neuron, the volume of energy that an individual neuron consumes will be so high. Even, to, even now, if you are in a restful position right now, twenty percent of your energies are being consumed by your brain right now. It's a very high energy consuming part of your body. This much of body consumes eighty percent. This much of brain consumes… I'm sorry, don't be insulted by the size, okay. Um, this much of brain is consuming twenty percent of the energy. If you increase the size of the neuron, it will consume thirty to forty percent. That means it will become unsustainable. So today neuroscientists are saying, physical loss on the planet will not allow further growth of human brain. We can only learn to use it better, but we cannot grow a bigger brain. This Adiyogi said fifteen thousand years ago, he said, your physical evolution is complete because the solar system will not allow. Unless some dramatic changes happen in the solar system, you cannot physically evolve, but there are other ways to evolve. And he thought the methods as to how a human being can evolve beyond his limitations and it need not be a physical evolution. It does not mean you lost your tail and you have to grow horns. It means that there are other ways to evolve which need not be physical.